Live from Midtown Manhattan, the Cube's live coverage of Big Data NYC, a Silicon Angle Wikibon production, made possible by Hortonworks. We do Hadoop and Wham Disco. Hadoop made invincible. And now your co-hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, we're back here live in New York City for Big Data NYC. This is the Cube, our flagship program. We're out these events are strictly similar to the North. So we create our own events. This is Big Data NYC, and we're covering Big Data Week here in New York City, which is Hadoop World, the Strata Conference right across the street next to the Dalton. I want to put a shout out to uh, Hortonworks and Wayne Dispo for their incredible support and underwriting independent coverage. And I'm going to join with Dave Vellante and Dave Richards, the CEO of Wayne Disco. Thank you very much uh, for coming on the Cube and for your uh, support from the Cube. Uh, the community is very appreciative. We are very appreciative and, and wanted to say thank you uh, for supporting the Cube. Always a pleasure. You guys are doing a fantastic job, by the way. Thank you. Um, so, um, get us just get right into it. Uh, this is the fourth year of the queue here at Duke World, and you know, Dave and I always joke about kind of the evolution. We've watched these waves over our years of, of in, the, in the business, but this more hyper growth than anything else. The Duke four years ago was an Apache project that was just kind of nascent with Alpha Geeks. Now it's mainstream. New York City puts an exclamation point on the business value. And one of the things that people are talking about here is you know, people are starting to settle into their positions. You're starting to see maturis maturization of who's got what, who's what's working. And at the end of the day, people really want to move this into production, into a comprehensive enterprise of the solution, whether it's financial services, healthcare, oil and gas, all of the above. So I want to get your take first question on um, Wayne Disco. What are you guys seeing? How do you fit into the landscape? And share with the folks out there, one, the positioning of the company. And two, where is the meat on the bone right now? What is taking hold? What Lance, part of the landscape is, is solid. What are people building on in terms of the technology and the business solutions? Okay, so I'll, I'll sort of set that from the top. So, when Disco is in the continuous availability of, of the Duke space, we've got some unique technology that enables active, active replication of data that we've been for a number of years uh, replicating source code management systems like Subversion and Git, and we recently ported that technology over into the Hadoop space. And as you mentioned earlier, we've got a partnership in our streets with Hawking Works, um, where we support their distribution, and we have others potentially as well. So what are we actually seeing in the marketplace? Well, we placed, I wouldn't say a bet, but, but the notion was that Hadoop 1 was sort of batch processing, Hadoop 2 is more about real-time transaction processing, which has massive implications in the enterprise. So what we're beginning to see now, because we're in the continuous availability space, of course, is companies looking to implement Hadoop 2, all that great stuff, YARL, um, that, was, that, that, that was recently announced by Hortonworks. And we think that that has a massive impact on enterprise usage patterns, where we're going to see some pretty large Hadoop clusters in major banks, telecommunications companies, healthcare companies. And we're seeing a lot of movement. We've, I think we've got five or six POCs about to start underway right now with major financial and major telecommunications companies. And these are not, you know, these are not companies that just adopt the latest and greatest technology. These are companies that are very careful about which technologies they're adopting. And Hadoop is the number one thing on their agenda. So David, a lot of practitioners, like hardcore dogmatic guys, early Hadoop guys will say, Hadoop should be batch, it was designed for batch, shouldn't go into o OLTP. What gives you confidence that the ecosystem is emerging and evolving to support those types of transactional systems. We, we had a discussion earlier today uh, off camera where you, was, you were saying that you know, the average age of enterprise application is 19 years, <laughs> right? I, it is, it is. What, what we're, what's happening now, this is a paradigm shift, and I hate that phrase, but it's true. This is a paradigm shift where we're asking enterprise to redevelop those applications. They're 19 years old on average, and they're going to, they are going to be redeveloped on this new operating system called Hadoop. That, that's where we're seeing the entire shift in the market going to. That's why there's, that's why we've got thousands of people here today. That's why there are, I've, I've never seen a, I've never seen a trade show like this. It reminds me of the early days of ERP. We were, we were talking about that as well. I had made the statement, if you had to pick the ERP winner in 1990, you never would have picked SAP, would you? I mean, right? I mean, yeah. so it's very hard to, to, to predict winners now. You guys are obviously in the mix. Now, you're a unique company because you're, you're a publicly traded company on the London Stock Exchange. You're a high growth company in technology. It's not the typical prototypical company for, you know, you see it all the time in the, in the US. What, what's that like? Describe the environment over there. Well, 
I would say that we're in a, a, a pretty small list of companies that are doing cutting edge technologies, to be quite frank, on the London stock market. I, mean, it's, I think we're, the, we're about the only company that, that have got dual headquarters outside of even Silicon Valley that are in the, in the very, very core of Hadoop. So Hadoop really has been purveyed of Silicon Valley. I mean, there's a lot of interest in New York here, but the, the fundamental company, Hortonworks, Cloudera, et cetera, Pivotal, are all really based in Silicon Valley. So just being outside of Silicon Valley alone sort of sets us apart. But being on the London stock market really does. I mean, I remember a year ago, a year and a half ago, going around the fund managers talking about big data. I mean, they didn't know what big data was, you know, sort of 18 months ago. Now everybody's talking about it. There's a lot of excitement in London about the potentials of big data, and even Hadoop is now becoming widely known um, outside of this. So talk about what's the appetite for a, a technology growth stock like yours? I mean, people who have invested your stock must be very happy. I mean, it's done tremendous performance, and, <laughs> and it appears to be there's more upside. You, you mentioned to, that you just did a, another offering, a secondary. You're raising, what, $34 million, you said? Yeah. And you said the stock price went up. When you announce yeah. that, it's not, you know, normally that doesn't happen, but the appetite for growth stocks must be huge. Well, I, I, I think there's something to be said for coming to market, coming to market very specifically to raise growth capital. Mm -hmm. So what we were looking for were um, a couple of key, key moments, key milestones for us, one of which was you know, a very strategic arrangement that we announced with Hortonworks. SAP were also quoted in that press release um, a, a, month, a month or two ago. So that was a key moment, and I think the market said, you know what, this company are going places. There's, there's a lot of pent-up demand in, in, in big data and Apache Hadoop. Obviously, the next strain of Hadoop, the 2.0 release, the, the 2.2 release as it is now that came out recently, is real-time processing. So they recognize that continuous availability is a nice, it's a must-have in those kind of enterprise environments. And I think the market likes growth. Uh, we are rated for growth. Mm. I mean, there, there are so few growth stocks out there right now. Uh, in, on the London market, certainly, but we are in, in a very sh in a very short list. David, I, I got to ask. I got to ask you. you know, we, David, I was talking about the cloud and the data center. One of the hottest trends outside of big data people in the world is software-defined data center. Uh, software-defined data center is you know, building on network virtualization and so on and so forth. So, with that new trend, that's kind of the engine of driving innovation. Big data sits on top of that. That's where the apps are. The killer app, as I just tweeted, you know, the, the, the internet created email, the killer app. Now, big data creating analytics, the killer app. That's all going to run on the data center. So, software-defined data center still is a data center. So, so the role of the data center is important. So talk about your uh, recent announcement and your role with Wardworks and your partners around making the data center a key secure part for that high availability for continuous operations. Well, it's interesting, isn't it? Because w what actually created this thing called big data, um, and really, it's, it's, we should just call it data, because that's what it will be in three years anyway. Um, the thing that created it was economics. It was, it was the point at which it became more cost efficient to store rather than throw away data because we're, we've always been creating this stuff it just it used, just used to be too expensive to store it so trends in the marketplace like disk like solid state drives like software defined data centers all of those things are driving adoption of big data and it was i think we're right in the eye of the storm now where all of these technologies came together at exactly the same time and thus we have uh, big data now we like Hortonworks, we like Cloudera, we like Pivotal. The reason we like Hortonworks so much is because they are very near as damn it open source, pure open source. The business model is we're going we're gonna to deliver a pure open source product, you're going to install that in your data center, and of course you're going to have to buy a support contract product. That's as simple as they, their business model is, they, they don't even hide it. And we like that. So we think that adoption of Hadoop, we don't actually have to be involved in the creation of the distribution itself. We like the fact that that Hortonworks are doing a great job of, of selling Hadoop into the, into the enterprise. And we want to trail on behind that and become the de facto HA layer of the stack. And you think the data centers are ready right now, so we you know, talked okay. before you came on. Um, many data centers have embraced the POCs of Hadoop now. Things are in Hadoop, they're on top of Hadoop, with the whole you know, data engine around that data platform. So, so give us a, a taste of, on uh, scale of 1 to 10, 10 being completely vague scaling. Where are the data centers relative to Hadoop? And Hadoop, and the, and, and the engines around the apps are I, I don't. I don't know if I could accurately <laughs> enumerate it. It's somewhere between five and ten. Um, I, it's always tough. All, all my friends in the data center business would shoot me if I said anything else. But um. <laughs> okay, I'll say it. <laughs> well, I, I think we're part of this. I mean, we enable the data. Well, we make the data center not be the single point of failure, even in the event of an outage, a flood, a hurricane, an earthquake. So we're part of that fabric 
that's creating this new this, this, this new this new protocol. Or even if there's, you know, even if Hurricane Sandy got the winds to year to day, blows through New York and takes primary and secondary out in New Jersey, that no longer becomes a problem because you've got a data center somewhere else on the globe. WANs go back to back to replication. That's precisely what we're doing. So I think we're part of, of, of this enablement of the Duke to be enterprise class and enterprise ready. Well, and, and as well, it means that customers will start putting more and more data and applications into this new style of, of data manipulation analysis and insight that they wouldn't before. So it's you know chicken or egg, but you're providing that infrastructure to give people confidence. Precisely, and, and you know, you, you, one mustn't forget one of the major driving forces for big data isn't just to do in technology, it's economics. It's with the, the, the cross point, the point at which it became cost efficient to store rather than throw data away. So you got great subscription growth, right? That's, that's, that's picking up. So then you build up that annuity over time. So you got, you got some tailwinds that are really good. It looks like you've got a lot of infrastructure in this space that's, that's free, it's open source, mm -hmm. and you're monetizing services. Yeah. Works out. A lot of people don't like services models. We, we of course, love services here because it's where a lot of the work gets done. And then the hard to do stuff whether it's, like you said, the continuous availability layer, the applications, is that where the money's going to get made here? Um, I, think, I think a lot of companies are going to do very well out of the big data space. I mean, undoubtedly, and your own analysis from, from Wikibon tells us that a lot of the early markets, the hardware guys and the service guys, so companies like Intel, mm. IBM, HP, they're all going to do very well out of, out of big data. I think the next wave, however, is going to be intensely software focused. I think you're going to see the likes of Cloudera or Hortonworks, Pivotal ourselves, do very, very well from the next wave in the marketplace, which becomes a lot more, a lot more focused around the actual software and applications themselves. That's a great point. I'm getting pushed on time here. We've got a, a, the last question. I was going to ask you what's that next vision for you guys. Well, I went, but I'll, I'll just kind of reframe it. That's our focus is what we're seeing as well. That's the value creation side of it, building on the scale and the, the platforms. But uh, what's, what's up for you guys? What's happening for you guys around the show? What's coming out of this? What do you expect to happen for your company when Disco? And then you know, tease that out a little further, a little more detail on what's happening next around the software. What key areas do you see developing faster? Which ones are going to be maturing and scaling? Uh, where are the white spaces? Feel free to elaborate. Yeah, so we're seeing certainly people are asking, you know, we've got, we've got potential customers asking for active, active replication of the white area network. I mean, you know, it's, it's not a random thing that one just asks, wakes up one morning and says, I need active, active replication. No, that's actually happening. <laughs> so that's, the, so that's, that's pleasing, right? So we, we've seen that trend, certainly on the booth here, and also um, with, with customers in, in some of our channels as well. But we're beginning to see that trend. Um, we're also seeing requirements for selective replication. So replicating maybe customer data over here, product data over here. So we're seeing, you know, s s some really interesting use cases come out of this. And it's, you know, a lot of the early adopters for this, I think, are going to be financial institutions. Maybe I'm a bit biased because we're in New York and on Wall Street, of course. But so we're certainly seeing financial institutions, telecommunications companies, but there are some common there are some common threads like that selective replication, keeping data segregated into different data centers completely. But certainly, enterprise enablement of big data of Hadoop is a common trend. And if if, if we are going to get this second wave from batch processing to transactional systems. There are certain things, I, I think the top two, in everybody's mind, but it's high availability and security, certainly the top two things focus for the enterprise. And what's really exciting is that when watching the success of your company uh, as, as you guys continue to grow and add value, and it's one of those things where, you know, just in two years ago, as the market matures, a lot of the complexity starts to become apparent as the engine is built and the, the proverbial cars are hitting the street, people are seeing the business value, and it's nice to see you guys get some of that success. Congratulations on all your success, and, and again, we appreciate the uh, support to the community by underwriting the cube. It's David Richards, CEO of uh, Wendisco. Thanks for coming on the cube. Really appreciate it.